Hello, this is Dennis with Walk This Way. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you have uh, checked out my most recent video on how to personalize your eSword Bible Study Toolkit. Now, today, I want to apply those tools uh, in looking at a verse from the Bible. Before we do that, uh, I like to pray and claim the promise of John 14, 26, but the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, uh, whom God will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things under your remembrance whatsoever I have spoken unto you. So we want um, to have the Holy Spirit to instruct and teach us in the way that we that he wants us to go. And that's Psalm 32 eight. So we want to claim all these promises. So now the Holy Spirit is with us. He's going to give us fresh insights uh, on these verses, applying these tools in Esword. So I'm in John 3, 16. So uh, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to look at verse 5. This is the love chapter. And so I read this over probably over 100 times, and uh, I did not really get the understanding, the meaning, until I studied the Bible, until I took uh, this phrase and tried to understand it, meditate on it, and and, and get further, deeper into it in the definitions of it. And that's when the Holy Spirit will give you fresh insights. So let's look at this in the 2022 updated version. You have this four column. This is powerful. This is where you're going to do most of your Bible study. In the left upper quadrant here, you have the uh, chapter and verse. In the, right, uh, the left uh, lower quadrant, you're going to have the Strong's Concordance, and that's built in. And then you have the cross-reference, the treasury of scriptural knowledge in the right upper quadrant. And then you have the commentaries in the right lower quadrant. That's about all you need right there. So let's look up easily provoked. So I'm going to hold this down um, there. And it, it gives you the Strong's Concordance first and then the King James Concordance. And that's in personalizing, personalizing my uh, Bible study toolkit. I put... Strauss Concordance first, then the King James Concordance, but you could do whatever you want. But I love this where it has the, the definition here. Uh, it tells you how many occurrences. Um, I want to, to so let's, let's define it, to sharpen alongside, to exasperate. What does that mean? So let's hold that down here and let's define and this is in the built-in dictionary in your iPad, New Oxford American Dictionary. And it tells you here uh, to irritate, frustrate, uh, down below, uh, infuriate, anger, annoy. Uh, so you want to cut and paste all that uh, into your notes or to your editor. So I have a heading that says, how can I not be easily provoked? And then I put 1 Corinthians 13, 5, and then I put... Uh, easily provoked, and then the definitions underneath that. And then going down here, the King James Concordance, there are two occurrences, and I love this because it, it tells you not only the definition, but the verse, uh, the chapter and the book, the, the chapter and verse. So since there's only two occurrences, I want to look at Acts 17, 16. Amazing. This is powerful. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Isn't that something? I always thought that provoked was in a negative context, but here um, it's, it's in a positive context. So it says here that when Paul looked at this city, that they're all given over to idol worship, his heart was stirred in him, a strong emotion of, hey, I... I want the gospel to go to these people. I want to be free of all these idols. So cut and paste that into your notes or to editor. So going back here, um, there's a t um, the cross-reference here. I'm not going to use any of those in, in this study, but you could uh, uh, hold down one uh, like Philippians 4.8. Um, it's the opposite of behaving itself unseemly. That was a little earlier in this uh, verse. Uh, and it tells you, uh, uh, finally, brother, what things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report of the many virtue. If there be any praise, think on these things. Uh, if you want to, you can cut and paste those kind of things. But we're focused on easily provoked here. So uh, 
then you could go to, uh, let's go to compare. And here, this is beautiful. I have it arranged, my uh, 10 translations of, of uh, versions of the Bible. Uh, you can have it arranged any way you want to and personalize in your toolkit. Uh, I have the contemporary English version first, easy reading version, and new living translation. I like those versions, um, but I study out of the King James Version. So it says here, uh, love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. So I cut and paste that. Love is not rude. It is not selfish, and it cannot be made angrily easily. Love does not remember wrongs done against it. Uh, New Living Translation or Rude, that's uh, from the previous verse. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. That's what it means to be easily provoked. And it keeps no record of being wrong. So I'll cut and paste some of these uh, into my study, into notes. Or, and that's powerful. It's easier to cut and paste in compare than it is in parallel. But I love parallel. I, for me, it's, it's vertical and I can see it easier. And I only have, I personalized or customized only uh, five different versions of, of the Bible because the more you have, it, it actually causes the columns, the words to go over to the next column, depending on your uh, pixel size and the font. So, and you can uh, look at that in display settings uh, uh, in, in your, uh, let's see here, we could go to that, see right here, and display settings right here, and here it is. So I'm in Arial, uh, and I'm at 20, at 30 pixel here. So uh, that's how you could uh, change that. And by the way, you could, uh, uh, if you're studying at night, you could go to uh, dim light uh, or low light uh, so that uh, uh, the lightness won't keep you awake at night. So let's go back to daylight, that's, that's powerful. So, okay, so then let's go back to the four column and now look at the commentaries. And so um, the problem is, is it doesn't tell you what commentary. I like using uh, Albert Barnes, Matthew Henry, and uh, John Gill. So in uh, Matthew uh, or Albert Barnes, the word easily is not expressed in the original. The translators have inserted it to convey the idea that he who is under the influence of love Though he may be provoked, that is injured, or though there might be incitements to anger, yet that he would not be roused or readily give way to it. That's powerful. Cut and paste that. I highlighted these things uh, for the sake of time. He looks soberly at things, and though he may be injured, yet he governs his passions, restrains his temper, subdues his feelings. This, Paul says, would produce by love, and this is apparent. If we are under the influence of benevolence or love to anyone, we shall not give way to sudden bursts of feeling. And then you can go down below here. So let's go back uh, to the Bible here, to this call. And uh, you could uh, look at context here. Um, well, first of all, uh, you could cut and paste what you uh, read there in uh, the commentaries under your study into notes or editor. Um, I wanted to show you that there are indicators at the in the middle of the page here. You could go forward. Uh, in this particular uh, verse here, uh, we don't need to look at context, but there are times that we need to look at context in order to understand uh, the meaning of the verse. So we could go forward in the middle of the page, right? Uh, so to chapter 14 in 1 Corinthians. Prophecy in tongues, or the end, let's go on the left column, the arrow, we could go backwards. So I love that. So you could look, uh, look at history here of what you recently brought up, and that's you can go back. Uh, that'll, it's quicker for you to go back uh, to uh, the, where you were at before. So we go back here, and let's see, is there anything else that I have not shown you? Uh, of all the different tools here. I think that's pretty much it. Um, you can look at uh, various uh, dictionaries here. I, I, I have set up Webster's, but you can see there's uh, many others. That, these are the ones that I have customized or personalized to put in my toolkit. So going back here. So this is how it works. The Holy Spirit speaking to, to me, and I'm going, how can I not be easily provoked? He directed me to the phrase just before easily provoked. 
seeketh not her own. There's the answer. Wow, well, let's look this up. Seeketh, so it's to seek, um, uh, 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 let's see here, um, seek, uh, sought, seeking, desiring, inquiring, um, to go, go, so endeavor. So you could cut and paste some of those, but here it is, seek it not her own. When I look under this, um, it, it says here, um, I look down here at the bottom under conceits. And so I held that down, define, and it says excessive pride in oneself. He's puffed up with conceit, a fanciful expression of writing or speech. Let's see, uh, uh, self-admiration and narcissism, self-love, all those things. You could cut and paste those kind of things. And then you could look at the commentary, does not behave itself unseemly. Uh, and uh, true religion or love to others will prompt us to seek their welfare with self-denial and personal sacrifice and toil. There it is. You cut and paste that, you put together a summary, and you say, Lord, help me. Uh, you've, under, you've given me the understanding uh, of what it means to not be uh, easily provoked and, and the solution. And so, Lord, I want to apply that to my life. Live in me and through me. So, wow, I think we've pretty much covered all the tools here. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, please check out our other videos of Bible study and prayer. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will continue to learn how we can have a close walk with God. Thank you.